During his campaign, the president-elect promised supporters he would empower them through an indigenization policy which requires foreign companies to cede majority stakes to locals. Investors were jittery before the polls. Now, those fears have increased. The immediate reaction of the markets indicative of this as well as deeper rooted challenges for the economy. The changes in shares and who owns the shares it doesn't actually make a difference to the productive capacity of a country. What we need is a climate within which people are prepared to start new companies and people are prepared to invest extensively in the companies that they have already. That won't happen if the financial markets remain depressed as is likely until the incoming government makes a pronouncement on its policies. The government might come through with a slightly more relaxed indigenization plan. I've heard them speaking of instead of a five-year horizon they might give the companies 30 years to make sure the change takes place. Such a move could boost investor confidence. It could also unlock much-needed financial support from international lending institutions like the World Bank and IMF. The country is heavily dependent on income from mineral exports. However, global prices of its major exports, gold and platinum, have taken a dip, while the costs of imports like maize, which will be needed after this year's poor harvest, have risen. With no international credit lines, Zimbabwe would be forced to run a cash budget. Now, this is a market that was already struggling under a liquidity crunch, and already players in the banking sector report that deposits are down and withdrawals up on news of the election outcome. Farai Mwakutuya, CCTV, Harare, Zimbabwe.